Hi guys, you're welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking. So, Sheikh Omar Suleiman is going to be passing this message to Muslim couples, and this is an eye opener for every Muslim couples out there. Let's check it out. No matter how much you do and no matter how much you mean, sometimes if it's not expressed, there is no shame in thanking a person. Okay? Mm. There is no shame in, in being sweet with your talk. This is what Rasulullah was. Rasulullah was someone who was frequently, he was always thankful with his tongue. Okay? Having a sweet tongue is very, very, very important. Mm. Especially, and this is sometimes brothers and sisters struggle with it in marital affairs, especially. And sometimes children who grow up in this culture who are used to the, to the fantasized you know, Hollywood lifestyle, you know, and all those things that you see on TV, they feel hurt by this. They feel a lack of compassion because sweet words are not there. Yeah, they're nice too. It's a very simple thing that you could add into your life. Mm. That, and it's expression of your gratefulness. Okay, so I'm not necessarily just talking about the tongue and those types of things. You know, subhanAllah, just a few weeks ago I had a couple in, in, you know, that I was counseling. And the wife was complaining about the husband. And really the husband does a lot. He does a lot. But he never says anything nice to her. I mean, it's always just business. Like, okay, what do you want? I'll get you this. All right, you want this? Go buy it. You know, he's such a, a rough person. So I said, yeah, it wouldn't hurt every once in a while to be nice to her, to speak nicely, you know, to say I love you to her, to bring flowers for her, to show an expression. These things are not from Western culture. These things are from Sunnah. You know? So for example, one of the... Uh, things in Imam Nukudama Rahimullah al Maqdisi, he said that to express love, okay, to express affection in a way that's not inappropriate is from the Sunnah of Rasulullah where in whatever fashion it is. So it changes in that regard. So, you know, the idea of kissing on the cheek every time you walk into the house and those types of things, expressions of love, expressions of gratitude, this is Sunnah. Rasulullah never walked into the house of one of his spouses without first kissing them without first embracing them. Expressions of love and these types of things. So I told the guy, you should buy some flowers every once in a while. And subhanAllah, three days later, the, the woman calls, I hope she never sees this video, I hope it's... <laughs> but the woman calls me, and she's just literally broken. And I'm saying, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's... she's, she's <gasps> so she's, she's like breathing really hard and talking about, he bought me flowers. And I was like, okay, that's good. Alhamdulillah, he bought me flowers. But the problem is, is that he came in with the flowers and he threw them at her and he said, Here, you happy? <laughs> I gave them to you. <laughs> he, has, he has made a progress. Inshallah, she never watches this video. Don't publicize this video. At least he tried so now from there. It defeated the purpose completely. No, no, I, was, I talked to the guy and he was like, he was like, Shushik Omar What do you want from me? I bought her what she wanted. What's like, you completely missed the point. So sometimes being grateful with the tongue, expressions of gratefulness, okay? Expressions of gratefulness are very, very significant. And this is not just between husband and wife. This is from child to, to parent. This is from parents to children. Okay, this is to brothers and sisters. This is generally speaking, expressing your gratefulness is extremely important, okay? Okay, to prioritize your relationships in life. First and foremost, there was probably no human being who did more for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa without complaining more than Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Khadija radiallahu anha is just that special. And she's so special that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel alayhi wa I mean imagine this. Okay? Now many times the wife, the wives of imams and dua and people that are, that are busy for the, you know, in, in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they struggle. And eventually, rightfully so, sometimes they crack. You know, that, that you're not giving us enough time or those types of things. A lot of imams struggle with this. A lot of du'a struggle with this, trying to balance family life and, and these types of things. Look at Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was the most wealthy. She was so wealthy. She was so wealthy that she could sponsor the entire household and she could sponsor. She was literally, at one point, the only financial source of the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? She had everything. And at the same time, she had noble status at the same time. I mean, think about this, and, and let's think about the human aspect of this, because sometimes we forget that the companions were human beings. Think about the human aspect of this. All of a sudden, Rasulullah starts his call. And as a dignified woman, 
who was 15 years elder to my husband. I lose my noble status in the sense that now, you know, we're looked at as, as the low people of society. We're about to go through boycott. We, we go through boycott and these types of things. All of our money is gone. All of our wealth is gone. All the headache that comes, the emotional headache that comes whenever your husband comes home bruised up and with marks on him and these types of things. Having to be there for Rasulullah wasallam. Think about the human aspect of this. The human drain that must have came upon Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. But she never complained. Even to the point that she died of malnutrition because of the boycott that came as a result of the da'wah of Rasulullah. She never complained. And there was no person that Rasulullah appreciated more than her. Anytime she was mentioned, Rasulullah's face would completely change. Anytime Rasulullah got some food in his house or some gifts, he would constantly send to her friends. Just out of his remembrance of her. He was, look at the loyalty of Rasulullah to her. Right? And it was even to the point that whenever her sister Hala would come and call upon Rasulullah wasallam, Aisha radiallahu anha describes this scene. Rasulullah wasallam automatically, if he's reclining, he jumps up. He gets up right away. And he says, Allahumma hala, Allahumma hala, oh Allah, it's hala, oh Allah, it's hala. He used to remember the voice of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha through the mouth of hala. And he would rush to go see what she wants. And Aisha radiallahu anha describes it from her perspective. You know that I was never, I was never jealous over any of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the way that I was jealous of Khadija radiallahu anha wa ma ra'aytaha. And I never saw her before. Subhanallah, I never met her before. But I was more jealous of her than any of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day she decided to test the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was remembering Khadija radiallahu anha. So Aisha radiallahu anha says what? هَلْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا عَجُوزًا بَدَّلَكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا Wasn't she just an old woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you better than her? She pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hair on his head stood up. Think about how angry he was. His face turned red. And he, now at this point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really cannot benefit much from a marital perspective by talking about the dead wife. Right? If anything, he's to convince the live wife that I don't care about her anymore. But look at the loyalty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Says, Wallahi ma badalani Allah khayran minha. Oh, by Allah, Allah did not give me better than her. And Rasulullah starts to mention her favors. Think about this. Sadaqatni, id kadhabani an nas. She believed in me. No, amanat bi, id kafra bi an nas. She believed in me when people, disbelieved in, when people disbelieved in me. She considered me truthful. She believed me when other people called me a liar. She spent on me, it haramani an nas, when other people refused to spend on me. And this is one thing that I want all of the, the brothers to pay specific attention to because we're going to start with the brothers in that regard. وَرَزَقَنِي اللَّهُ وَلَدِهَا إِذْ حَرَّمَنِي أَوْلَادَ النِّسَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with children through her and He did not give me children through any other woman. I want you to think about this, dear brothers and sisters. Rasulullah loved Khadija radiallahu anha so much. And this is just one more story that I just have to mention because it, it truly is so heartwarming. I want you to imagine this. Rasulullah in the battle of Badr. One of the prisoners that he had was who? Abu Al-As. Who was the husband of his daughter Zainab bintu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu anha. The daughter of Khadija. And she sends to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Abu al-As was fighting against the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He buckled to the peer pressure from the other side. And she sends to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the necklace of Khadija radiallahu anha to ransom her husband. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at this necklace and his entire facial expression changes. He's full of tears, subhanAllah. This is reminding him, it's painful memory of his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he's looking at it. And he says to the Sahaba, if you wish, you can free her prisoner and give her back the necklace. SubhanAllah, the gratefulness of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi to Khadija radiallahu anha, it never went away. He always was grateful to her. Okay? 
And this would bring me to my first point because we're going to categorize this. Shukur, gratitude between husband and wife. Okay? Specifically speaking, and I specifically want to uh, um, emphasize the last portion. Okay? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with children through her, and He did not bless me with children through anyone else. First and foremost, this is to the brothers. You know? We have to think about this. You know, Shaykh Muhammad was, was speaking about this. I don't want to spill too many, I'm not going to spill too many beans, but he was talking about starting a project to show appreciation to our wives. Okay, in that regard. Allah Azza wa Jal gives you this wife. And this woman gives birth to your children. She gives you a piece of you. And you still have the nerve to abuse her either mentally or physically. SubhanAllah, or emotionally. And it's, and it's interesting, subhanAllah, because Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned this, mentions this favor specifically. And this was not just something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and the Sahaba did not take it seriously. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a, a, a man once comes to him and says, you know, I think I, don't, I want to divorce my wife. Umar radiallahu anhu says, why? He says, she's just not attractive to me anymore. You know what Umar radiallahu anhu says? Where is your courtesy? Fa'ina ri'aya, where is your courtesy? Where is your courtesy? Meaning what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you children through this woman. This is the woman that takes all of your garbage when you go home and you just you vent out because of, of whatever you had at work. And then you still have the nerve to be rude to this person and to deny that this person had a had a huge part in your life. This is not from the Sunnah of the Messenger. You have to recognize that. And subhanAllah, this is another situation that, that I dealt with that, that boiled me. Uh, I remember a brother once complaining to me. He says that my wife doesn't do enough to take care of herself. I said, and I know that's a common complaint. And, and by the way, everything is with balance, right? Men and women, husband and wife should try to keep in shape for each other, should try to keep attractive for each other, as to keep their gazes restricted from other people. This is a fact. But again, the aspect of courtesy. And... I'm like, didn't your wife just have a baby? <laughs> and he says, yeah. I said, how long ago? Two months ago. I'm like, your wife just had a baby two months ago and you're coming and complaining about her appearance? SubhanAllah, a lot of times, you know, a lot of brothers, we have to think about this. And we'll say, she just doesn't do it for me anymore. I'm just not attracted to her anymore. She's, you know, if anything, she might have lost her shape because of us. <laughs> We're the one that got her pregnant in the first place. Being grateful to your wife is something that Rasulullah teaches us through the example of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala Now I can shift my attention to the sisters. Brothers, ignore everything that I'm about to say. Um, and and I, I hope that no one uses these things against each other. But Rasulullah also mentioned it on the other side. Right? Rasulullah once when he was admonishing the women, Rasulullah said, إِنَّهُنْ يَكْفُرْنْ Verily they disbelieve. Now, Again, the word kufr. And Islam is balance. Islam is balance. So the male sahaba say to Rasulullah wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, are our women kufar? Are our women kufar? And Rasulullah says, No, innahun yakfurna bil ashir. Okay? They disbelieve in the good that you do towards them. Meaning what? And this is the exact example that Rasulullah said. That sometimes, and this happens a lot between husband and wife, I'm not saying it's everybody, please, no one throw a piece of pizza at me or anything like that, okay? Or a chair, that would hurt. But I'm not saying everybody. But think about this. Rasulullah said that you would do so much good and then one mistake and the answer is, I've never seen any good from you. Um, sometimes women use this as a tactic against men. I know because I'm the imam in my community and I've seen this many times. You've never done this for me. You've never done that for me. You've never done that. I hear the word never. I mean, from, from, from the sisters in my community more than anything else. I'm like, come on, never? Never? You know? So you would deny everything because of one misstep. And, that, and unfortunately what that does is that fuels the other side and then that's where shaitan works his magic. Right? So it's also important for the sisters, sometimes men are, sometimes we're idiots. Sometimes we mess up. Okay? And it's important from the sisters not to deny every good thing that the husband does based upon this one mistake and said, I've never seen any good for, from you. You've never treated me well. You've never taken me out. You've never, the sister, didn't, didn't you just go to Disney World? You know, something like that. I, you've never done this. The word never. Yakfurna bil ashir. Very, very, very important. Okay? 
to, to keep this in mind from both, from both sides. To be grateful to one another as husband and wife is crucial. And we see it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the perfect balance, the perfect balance in that regard. Okay? Wow, guys. So this is an eye-opener. He's passing a message to every Muslim couple. It's not only relationship per se. Even when it comes to friendship, you need to show appreciation for friendship. You need to let people know that, okay, your effort is, is being appreciated. Whatever you do for each other, you know, it's being appreciated. You know, but when it comes to couple life, like your married couple, you no, know, not only Muslim per se, even every religion you find yourself, you need to know how to, you know, express. Expression is very needed. Express your words. You need to let the person know how you feel. It's not only by, you know, giving out gifts. Gift is necessary in, in, uh, in, in relationship between married couples, even when, if you're dating, gifts are necessary. You're just trying to show love and care to the person, letting the person know that the person means a whole lot to you. But apart from giving gifts, items, or rendering gifts, you need to also, you know, say it out. That's why there's five things that should always be in your mouth. Please, I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. I miss you. And it makes my references to a lot of stories in the Quran and trying to let people know that, you know, marriage is not all about you guys just coming together to start a family. No. It's not you coming together to have children. No. Some people marry because of children, right? Some people marry because they want companionship. But let everything be included. Children, companionship, love, care, understanding, you know. So you can also talk about, you know, how your relationship or your marriage has been. They're talking about your faults. Uh, your weakness, your strengths, you know, trying to solve out and make sure that your marriage works much more better in future. That was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.